All right, so for this video, I thought I'd do something a little bit different, and that is just upload a full set or a full workout of me on the heavy bag. Now, a bit of warning to some of you, this video is gonna be boring. It's not gonna be uh, fast-packed information like you usually get. So for those of you who get bored easy, I'm warning you, pause the video right now, go watch PewDiePie, go watch Kino Body, go watch somebody else who is maybe a little bit more excited. But uh, anyways, this video, I'm breaking down my 10 round boxing workout again. And uh, I'm gonna give you some commentary on what I'm doing. And then I'm just gonna let it ride for a little bit as I'm working and then skip to the next round. So I haven't recorded the breaks, I cut those out. But there'll be periods where you'll just see me uh, working with no commentary. And you can always skip through. I'm gonna leave a little uh, time table of comments in the comments section so you can click on that so you can skip to the beginning of each round. So here in the beginning, round one, all I'm working on is the jab, or the main thing I'm working on is the jab. So, you know, for you guys out there who maybe want some ideas on your workouts, or maybe you see this and you say, hey, you know, I like that, but I can do it better, I can do it this way, or, you know, maybe I'm gonna take that technique and do this with it. This is really just to give you some food for thought, get you in the mood, uh, maybe help you with your own ideas or if you're a beginner and you want to uh, watch and pick up a few things from this video then use it use it for your own routine I mean, the hardest part about boxing is staying motivated to be consistent you know, putting in the rounds being consistent you can go to the gym once you get to round 10 or let's say let's say once you've done your warm-up you get to round six on the bag or whatever it's easy to pack it in early and go home so once you have fun things to do different drills different ideas different techniques keeps you in the gym longer and keeps you coming back so you may even split up your workout into two you do your shadow boxing at a gym somewhere then go into your boxing gym warm up and then you go straight to the bag all right so all of that's all about motivation and keeping yourself positive so first round here I'm working on the jab Double jab, uh, single jabs popping in and out, jab moving the head, uh, working different punches off the jab, jabbing to the body, jabbing to the head. This is what I'm doing in round one. Now in this workout, um, round eight, the camera cut off. So you're gonna see nine rounds, but round eight and nine are the same, which is basically me working on the inside. So when you see round nine, you're basically gonna see round eight. So here I go, I'm gonna let the rest of this round ride out. All right, next round. I'm still working the jab, but I'm working it from the southpaw stance. Southpaw is not my natural stance. And everybody fought uh, southpaw and uh, you know, sparred a little bit in southpaw, but it's something that's always been a work in progress for me. So what you know, I can feel it. You can feel it in your body. Certain techniques don't come as easy, but I think it's great for balancing out your body, especially if you're boxing a long time. And you don't get lopsided and have certain parts of your body move a certain way. Uh, you get tight in certain places, so being able to balance it out is good for you. Also gives you a new challenge, it makes it more fun. You become a beginner and you realize, oh, I've got weaknesses here. I've got weaknesses in my right hook, uh, weaknesses in my stance when I throw the jab. I don't have the same quickness in my mind to move after I hit because some of the logical flow doesn't come as easy in the southpaw. And those of you starting young, you can work this and really make yourself truly ambidextrous in the ring. Uh, be able to use that to your advantage. You see a lot of fighters going that way. Uh, you really got to see how it's working for you. Sometimes it works uh, and sometimes it doesn't depending on your opponent what's going on. But always great to train that. So here I am, same thing, working the jab, double, triple jab, moving my head after the jab, and working different punches off the jab, and then of course footwork as well.
Okay, so here I go round three. Round three, I'm just working simple combos. I'm going beyond the jab, but not getting into any big head movement or any other tactics or techniques. I'm just trying to get all of my other punches warmed up. So here I am working short combos, trying to get the cadence going. One, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, one, two, three. Really get the hands moving, but in short little bursts. And also just get in other little habits, keeping the hands up, moving after I throw. Uh, starting the combo with different punches. And the one thing about this workout is sometimes you may throw a combo, it doesn't feel right. You have to be aware of your body. You throw earlier, I started a little combo with the right hand. I could feel that I kind of pushed it and leaned into it a little bit. Didn't have you know, a quick release. So then you'd go at your combo again. You go at it two, three times. See if you can really polish it up and sharpen it up. See if you can make it quick, make it loose. And you're going to feel that as your punches get better, you know, when you are a beginner and you're punching, you almost feel like you're punching with rubber bands. You almost feel like you're punching with one of those bands because there's tension all through your punch. But as you get more efficient, you'll feel that you almost pulse your, your shot from, from your guard. Your hand pulses almost to get it out, like, a, like an initial energy to, to get that punch flying. And then it flies and, and hits into the moment of impact. So you're going to get more loose, head moving around less, feet stuttering less and moving around uh, your transitions and continuity will be a lot better so again simple combos is going to get me thinking about other things and uh keep my hands up moving and getting used to the cadence and the speed of course i still got seven more rounds to go so i'm not trying to kill myself just yet just have some fun with it and work different things All right, so here we go, round four. So round four, I'm doing the same thing as round three, but out of the southpaw. And this is about the last round that southpaw is gonna get any love from me, but I'm working combos out of the southpaw position. And you know, really, again, you have these parts in your combos where you almost have hiccups or struggle points. For me, that's between the straight left and the right hook. So often, I'll just work that. Straight left, right hook, straight left, right hook. And um, here, you know, I'm obviously throwing other punches and mixing it in, but once you get through those kind of, you know, stiff points or sticking points where you feel, you can feel it in your body that some punches don't flow, then you can start to connect. You know, jab, straight left, right hook, straight left, or uh, you know, jab, straight left, right hook, left uppercut, and then move your head and then throw again. And then again, also my footwork in the southpaw, it's not, it doesn't have as much mobility, as natural mobility, so that's other stuff that I, I can work on here, I'm working on some angles and trying things. Also in your bag work, you gotta have fun and be creative. Don't just do what you know or what you're good at. You gotta try a few things, take a few chances, work on something, whether it looks bad or not, or whether it feels bad, this is your chance to work on something because in a year or a year and a half, it might be one of your best tactics. So use this time to, in the southpaw stance, you can get a little bit creative if you're an orthodox and vice versa. You see things from a different point of view. You see the southpaw point of view. You can be either working the techniques or visualizing, seeing something in front of you and getting used to that. As a southpaw, you see the orthodox. Now you know what the, ortho the southpaw sees when they see you, if you are an orthodox, and of course, vice versa.
All right, here we go, round five. So round five, I'm focused more on head movement. Throwing, moving my head and throwing, moving my head after I throw. Different ways to move your head. So yeah, one, two, and then the duck out. And then one, two, three, slip three. One, two, three, slip three again. You, and you feel it, and you might not feel right. You might feel, oh, you know, my chin can be tucked better, or my balance could be better, so you'll work it a few times. Here, then I'm popping back. And you can either work on one combo and certain to really perfect it. You see there, I get the pull counter with the jab. And then maybe I think I try a little, a little dip and then jab that's coming up eventually. Sort of slip right jab, then moving my head around. And trying different things with head movement. Even later on this round, I sort of do a pull, uh, throw the right hand, pull counter with the right hand. And whether you use these in sparring or a fight or not, it doesn't really matter. You want to. Try to work all your different skills and tactics, make your body more mobile, get used to uh, working different techniques, so that way your, your body and your movement opens up and you start to get more variability and more control over your body. Even though you know a lot of things I work on the bag, I wouldn't necessarily use it in sparring, depending, because for example, me pulling a, a pull counter against a taller opponent, it can be done, but it often doesn't work. So Sometimes you just want to box and have fun, stay motivated, you can pretend you're Mayweather, pretend you're Ali, pretend you're Ray Leonard, and that really gets you in the mood. Pretend you're Tyson, and work on those tactics. So here, this round, I'm focused on head movement, and this really taxes you as well there. So a little bit of pull, kind of slip, and with the jab, and head movement really taxes you. You'll find that it takes a lot out of you. You can almost punch all day, but the minute you gotta snap the head and throw, that's another level of energy taking out of you. So this round, focus on head movement. So you, again, if this is part of your style, or even if it's not, I recommend you work a round or two of emphasizing head movement in your bag work and shadow boxing. All right, here we got round six. Now, for those of you, I probably didn't clarify, I'm doing three minute rounds with a one minute break. So that's, I know somebody's gonna ask that. And the other thing that you probably might ask is what's the weight of the bag? I don't know, I never know. I never know the weight of the bag. I, I never get a chance to weigh it before I hit it. <laughs> but uh, I guess maybe some bags have it listed. But I would guess, I would guess this is maybe 80 to 100. I'm, that's just a guess. The gloves, I do know where to get those gloves. You can get them at the Precision Striking shop. Those are my heavy hitter bag gloves. So head on over to Precision Striking and you can pick up a pair of those no problem anytime. This round, I'm emphasizing the body, going to the body. Every combo either sets up a body shot, finishes with a body shot. I go to the body, I come up to the head. And even if it doesn't necessarily make sense, you know, throw to the body straight, I'm working my body techniques, body attack techniques. Some of them are tactical, body head. Some of them are just drilling the technique, going down with it, having fun, digging to the body. Some of them here, watch, I'm gonna do a little one, two step off on the angle. Boom, 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 and step through. I guess that comes up in a bit, but just trying, here, bomb. Just trying different things. And whether it's gonna work and spar or not, you've really gotta try different things and see, uh, get used to moving your body in different ways. And then you might be able to pull something off and spar and, uh, and even even if not, it just makes the whole session that much more fun. So this round, I am emphasizing body work, digging to the body.
All right, round seven. What I'm doing in round seven is emphasizing my balance and stationary punching. And you can even still, still see my feet move a little bit, and that's fine, they move a little bit. But I'm trying to not let my punches or my balance make my feet stutter, make them move. So a lot of times, especially if you're a very mobile fighter, you always move your feet. You're either in and out, side to side, and it's second nature to move your feet with your punches. But what happens is you start to move your feet all the time, and you often really don't set down your punches to get a good punch. So here, I'm really just trying to, my mind is on my balance. My mind is on the balls of my feet and my balance, uh, even though my eyes are on my punching, so my eyes are on the bag. So here, sometimes I move intentionally a little bit because you have to adjust for the bag, but most of the time, I'm almost imagining that there are two pegs in the, in the middle of the balls of my feet holding me into the ground and try and you know, make sure that I don't lean on the bag, make sure I don't use the bag to help me rest, make sure that my feet don't stutter after I throw to try to regain my balance. It's almost like a golfer off the tee, how when you see them drive that perfect shot, like everything goes into that one swing so clean. So you wanna try to work around like that. And you'd be surprised if you've been spending uh, your rounds doing a lot of freestyle boxing, you'd be surprised how much you lose your balance all over the place. When you try to keep your balance, you'd be surprised how much you lose it. You find your feet stuttering. So take a round just to work on movement, clean punches, and keep your feet right planted to the ground so that you can improve your balance. All right, round nine. It's actually round eight is already done, working on the inside, and this is, the camera got cut off, so we don't have round eight, this is round nine right here. Round nine, I'm just working on the inside, getting my head up uncomfortably close to the bag, getting myself uncomfortably close, feeling the sway of the bag, trying to maintain contact with it, trying to create space to throw, change the angle, uh, use my shoulder, use my elbow, use my forearm, and even this, if this isn't tactically perfect, like inside sparring against an opponent, it really gets you a feel for the contact and for being up close and for switching the angles with your feet, for being able to throw from short range. And I do a couple things here. A couple times you'll see me grab the back of the bag, which is simulating grabbing the back of the opponent's elbow right there, grabbing the back of the left elbow to hold them, to pin them down. A couple times you'll see me uppercut and miss, which is sort of because the bag doesn't have that lean forward effect when you get an opponent leaning in. So you gotta scoop that uppercut upward. And uh, a couple times you see me grab and pull in turns, like you're grabbing your opponent's sparring partner's elbow and turning them. But really just trying to get myself uncomfortably close, maybe I create space and get back in there and work. And this is very important for maintaining your balance, to be able to fire from short, to get used to opening, creating the openings on the inside, going to the body, coming up to the head, going around, coming up the middle, and then also being able to transition from tight to far to create space. See here I am pulling and turning. And then once you get comfortable with this, then you're gonna find that you're more relaxed on the inside and sparring, and that's when you can do the real stuff. That's when you can do things here, you, you apply it and you think, oh, this works. So then you bring it back to the bag with a visual reference, and then you can work on it even more. But you gotta at least first initially get used to this, 
uh, boxers who are not comfortable or good on the inside, they're always backing up trying to get space. And it's beautiful if uh, you're comfortable being in close. So work that on the bag. All right, round 10, the sound cut off on uh, my camera, so we're working with no sound. But all I'm doing here is just punch outs. It's round 10, I put in quite enough of work, and I'm really just hoping that this bell goes. I really, but I want to leave everything in the gym for today, at least on this bag workout, so it's just punching out. Probably could be going a little harder and faster if this was something really serious, but it's just my midweek workout. And so all I'm doing is punching out. And again, like it's tiring to punch. So when I move, this is when I catch my breath and move around, recover, recover, recover. And then boom, go up to 10 punches. One, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, boom, and then move around again. And I'm just trying to survive this round doing this. Stay busy, recover, work. Ba, 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 eight, nine, 10, and then move, and then move. And same thing, and you're just gonna see me do this for the round. So I hope this helps you guys out, especially if you're beginners looking for some ideas. Maybe you're already a seasoned boxer and you're just getting back into the groove or you want a little bit of motivation to get back into the groove. Maybe you picked up a couple things from this video or maybe you, you see something and you think, oh, that's pretty cool, but I can do it better. So good, go do it, go do it better. I want, I want you to be motivated. I want you to be motivated to work, motivated to be consistent. That's really the key is to keep that state of mind where every day you feel like working, motivated to work, motivated to go in the gym consistently, motivated to do more rounds, motivated to stay at the gym once you're there and do everything that you've got to do. And whether it's competition that drives you, somebody else you see at the gym that drives you, your goals that drive you. For me these days, it's just the feeling, the feeling of boxing the feeling of training there's really nothing quite like it nothing gives me the feeling quite like training after this session i was just flat out so i hope this video helps and uh yeah if you're interested in more instructional videos you know where to go precisionstriking.com you know where to pick up these gloves but otherwise really just hope you guys are motivated to stay in the gym and keep training all right i'm gonna let this video ride out for about another minute or so thanks for watching peace